This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash hue for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code hue at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. Between us, Claudia and I have had every model of Leica Q in hand. That is, the original Q, the QP, the Q2, and Q2 monochrome. But this one, Leica's just announced six grand. Okay, $59.95 Q3 is the one we're buying. It is an exquisite embodiment of physics, electronics, humanity, heritage, and how's this for a kick in the head? Value. The one camera, above all, that epitomizes the minimalist, no optical compromise, no futz, greatest joy, most inspiring, ride Moore's law, try not to sell a kidney to buy it philosophy, to which we adhere in our selection of gear, most especially for our personal work. So, yeah, let's get into it. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And yes, after going hands-on with a Q3, well, we've already ordered one, actually. As if we didn't have enough cameras as it is. That's because not only does the Q3 have the size, industrial design cues, build quality, feel in hand, menus, heritage, and 60 megapixel sensor of my M11. Resolution, size, weight, and unobtrusiveness my SL2 can only dream about. But now, among other things, A, a new to Leica hybrid phase detect autofocus system that again, my SL2 can only dream about. B, an also new to Leica 1.8 million dot tilting rear screen that my SL2 and my M11 can only dream about while maintaining the previous Q2's IP52 rating. C, the 5.7 million dot EVF of my SL2. D, a higher capacity 2200 milliamp hour battery within the same form factor of the one found in the Q2 and SL2, all within a slightly modified, but essentially identical Q2 body. That is, save for a marginal increase in thickness due to the tilting screen, along with relocated and reconfigured rear panel buttons. Did I mention that there is an additional assignable function button? I don't think so. So yeah, there's that. Which in turn means E, the same image stabilization of the Q2 and even original Q that my M11 still lacks. F, with the exact same knock my socks off, integrated autofocusing, of course, optional manual focusing, macro focusing, shut my mouth, hard stops at minimum and infinity focusing distances, Sumalux 28mm f1.7 aspherical. Which, for any of us out there wondering whether or not a lens released eight years ago can really handle 60 megapixels, I'm here to tell you, full stop. <laughs> yeah, it sure as <laughs> can. In fact, MTF charts, this is the first time I've been able to get my hands on the MTF chart for the 28 1.7 Lux, Confirm what my eyes have been telling me for years. This little sucker absolutely outperforms Leica's dedicated, interchangeable $7,800 Sumalux 28 1.4 aspherical with images like this. This last one, a crop of this. I didn't expect that. Did I mention that the Q3 offers for the first time 90 millimeter frame lines? Suddenly that doesn't sound so silly. So maybe you want to stop right here, rewind a bit and replay what I just shared with you. Because what I'm telling you is this, that 60 megapixel sensor, 
I can now get shots I couldn't get with my M or my SL2 without changing lenses. If I could swap lenses fast enough, which I will tell you straight up, I couldn't. And of course, the SL2, I couldn't get the same resolution no matter what. That hybrid phase detect autofocus. I can now get shots in focus I couldn't get with my M or my SL2. That tilting rear screen? Ditto. Especially brilliant for incognito street work. That 5.7 million dot EVF, I can now punch in to review a shot immediately after I've taken it with a level of detail I couldn't get with my M11, even with the Visoflex 2. Those frame lines that some of us might assume are gimmicky, I understand, but it turns out they're terrific, allowing me to frame up a section within my field of view with a degree of ease and precision never before possible on a full frame M sized camera. Finally, that new Maestro 4 processor, the secret sauce is to extracting the most from all of it put together. But what I'm also telling you is this. Not only is Leica offering in the Q3 an image stabilized, autofocusing 28mm Sumalux optically superior to the legendary M version for thousands less, but Leica is essentially throwing in the equivalent of a 60 megapixel autofocusing, EVF only, image stabilized, $9,000 M11 for free. Well, okay, except for the fact that you give up interchangeable lenses, but if you think about it long and hard enough, that's not quite right either. Because when cropped to a 35 millimeter field of view, this new 60 megapixel Q3 is still using 39 megapixels. And that is like getting a second prime. Leica's legendary $5,400 Sumalux M35 1.4 attached to a $9,000 40 megapixel M10R for free too. Although, while we're in the middle of this order by midnight tonight and get a free set of Ginzu steak knives moment, consider that cropped to a 50 millimeter field of view, the Q3 is still using 19 megapixels, which means Hey, you not only get the equivalent of a 35 flux mounted on an M10R for free, but the equivalent of a $4,500 50 millimeter F1.4 Sumalux M mounted to an 18 and a half megapixel M9 for free with better optical performance than either lens. The only fast, moderately fast 28mm in Leica's lens catalog that's better is their slower Aposumicron SL28 F2, but that bad boy is 5200 bucks by itself, bigger and heavier than the Q3 with lens. Which I forgot to mention, just so happens to be capable of recording up to 8K full width readout video that, say it with me now, my SL2 for which that Apo SL Sumicron lens line is designed, can only dream about. I could go on and on. There are accessories I'm not even going to talk about, but let's not sweat a bunch of details, beginning with, more interesting to me, a sentence that ends with a preposition, my anthropomorphization of a camera to begin with, or the fact that, on the one hand, the Q3 is not a mini SL2, given the Q3's thermal management and resulting limitations in recording times, even at less than 8K resolution because of its small and not originally designed for it body, the absence of mic and headphone jacks, and the inability, of course, to change lenses. Then again, the Q3 does have a USB-C port for charging or data transfer. I like that. And a suboptimal but present micro HDMI port for mitigating some of those recording limit thermal management and jack lamentations when used with an external recorder. And the Q3 introduces things the SL2 and M11 don't have, like a first ever implementation of Leica looks. That is, software, LUTs, to emulate, well, what precisely I'm not quite sure because they weren't available on the pre-production Q3 we had. But I think this could become Way interesting if Leica can bottle an agreed-upon 
factory certified definition of what the Leica look actually is. Dramatically faster transfer speeds between the camera and Leica's Photos app. Even inductive charging like a freaking iPhone via an optional and optional charge accessory grip at just $200 more than the Q2 at the time of recording. So, what does any of this mean precisely to you? Well, for those of us interested in Leica, or specifically in a Q, a great deal, literally and figuratively. First, prices on used Qs and Q2s should come down at least a bit, which is great for those of us who don't care about 60 megapixels or a tilty screen, but otherwise love the camera. Second, the Q3 is, relatively speaking, an incredible value, and to my way of thinking, the ultimate no futs made in Germany Leica for those of us shooting street and or travel and have both the inclination and financial wherewithal, because what we now have is essentially an autofocusing, image stabilized, EVF only Leica M with a very high performance, integrated, call it 20 to 50, 1.7 zoom, maybe even out to 75 or 90, depending on the characteristics of the image quality itself, display size, and viewing distance. Or, Okay, fine. By dint of its EVF autofocus image stabilization and up to 8K video recording, a call it an intimation, perhaps, of a mini SL2 at a fraction of the price of either when kitted with relevant lenses. But would it be even better if that rear dial were just a bit more accessible? Well, yes. Yes, it would. Would it be even better if the lens were a 20 or 24 rather than a 28. Someday, maybe. Like when the Q whatever sports a couple of hundred megapixels. It'll happen. But until then, the Q3 with the current 28 is such a compellingly small, powerful, and joyous product. One that actually exceeded my expectations at the 75 and 90 millimeter fields of view that it may cause many of us to rethink our entire approach to Leica gear. Like, uh, well, I don't know, maybe parking my SL2 here in the Bat Cave and going out on the street instead with our soon-to-be Q3 paired with my M11 and our Elmar 24 3.8, maybe our Apple Scopar 92.8 if we feel the need for even more reach. At the wide end, maybe I'll break down and finally get a Super Elmar 21 or 18. Maybe we'll even leave the S5 II mounted on our RS3 Mini at home. Maybe even our Insta360, once I've been able to spend enough time with the Q3 in video mode to determine if that's really feasible. I suspect not, but hey, just noodling, because this Q3 begs for that kind of out-of-the-box thinking. On the other hand, for those of us not interested in Leica, or simply unwilling or incapable of ponying up that kind of dosh, it won't mean a thing to you. Fair enough. Or maybe it will. Perhaps, if nothing else, as an affirmation that, say, a one quarter of the price Fujifilm X100V or XC4 with the 27 2.8 pancake lens, if you can even find one of them, never mind getting either one of them at list price, will do a whole lot of what the Q or Q2 can do still for a whole lot less money. Or that Sony and Nikon are doing a terrific job with their latest mirrorless lenses for far less money as well, as long as one is willing to haul around bigger, heavier bodies and swap lenses. Or that something like the iPhone 14 Pro will give you an even greater focal range than the Q3 in an even smaller package with less futzing at zero marginal cost if you already happen to have one in your pocket, and if your images are not destined for anything more demanding than Instagram. Or that you're just really happy with what you already have. Thank you very much. Although, if any of these last few descriptions does describe you, you probably knew this before you hit the play button. Thanks for watching anyway. And of course, that's fine too. Because as those of you who know me have heard from me so often, yes, it's about the gear, but no, it's not about the gear, it's about the people. It is. In other words, the photographer's heart, 
mind, gut, and soul. What one sees, how one chooses to see it, how one shares it, that matter most of all. Of course, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comment section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video call via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for